So how yeah. are you doing today? How how is how is life in general? You haven't been around the music business for quite a while. No, that's right. I mean, uh, life's good. I mean, I I have a you know nice nice family and a nice job, but uh, at the same time, I did start to to miss uh, playing. I mean, I I was always playing a little bit on the quiet, but but uh, I also my brothers they're, they're musicians or kind of hobby musicians a bit like me <laughs> and so we, we've been playing on and off together with them I mean my little brother he he played on, on my solo album as well and uh, we, we played as as kids we played a lot with my bigger brother mm -hmm. uh, and also with my wife who's a keyboardist he, we we played some some uh, events just as a duo Oh, okay. um, slowly but surely kind of the idea grew that why don't we all play together and we have a family band since everybody's called Stanford. Yeah. <laughs> As, and a, a really good way of keeping contact with, with my brothers who are kind of, you know, it was difficult to find time to, to you know, spend together. Everyone was busy in their, in their own thing. So there it was and, and, and here we are now. <laughs> So do you live all at the same place or are you like um, everywhere around, I don't know, Finland and also? Yeah, yeah, we live in, uh, in, in the Helsinki area. In the Helsinki area, okay. Yeah. So it's not so that, that hard or far to drive to see each other then? No, <laughs> no, not really, no, no. And, and uh, you know, some of us live live closer to where, where our dad lives uh, in, in Sipo, which is a little bit outside, outside of Helsinki. Mm -hmm in the countryside and and uh, some of us live here more, more in the suburbs of Helsinki. Okay so the album which is coming out in June is this family album you mentioned. Um, yeah, can you tell right. me who of your family is participating in this album? So I've got well, a few names but I have no idea how they are relatives to you. <laughs> yeah yeah I mean I have uh, I mean there's uh, my father's called Harry Stenfors. Okay, uh, he's part of it uh, too. So yeah. he, he's part of it in a couple of tunes. He, I mean, he, he wrote one and uh, uh, kind of organized it, uh, arranged it. And uh, then he sings on one one old jazz classic. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then my older brother Niels, or Nisse, Nisse Stenfors, he yeah. plays bass and sings lead as well on some songs and, and then my little brother Frey Stenfors plays drums and sings lead as well on some tunes uh, then my wife plays keyboards and sings backing vocals uh, then we have my younger brother's son uh, Jonathan Stenfors who plays mm -hmm. the other guitar and some other instruments like Mellotron and some synth and things like that He's kind of a multi-talent, and he also produced the record. Oh, okay. He's, a, wow. he's the technical one of us. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, very good to have one like that in the family. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. I mean, we're we're able to. We're very self-sufficient as a band, really, because of it. And then uh, my daughter Yasmin and uh, Frey's uh, daughter Carla, they sing backing vocals. So we have kind of an angel choir there. That's very good. Which is really nice for, for, for the backing vocals. I mean, that, that it really works works nice. But obviously it makes quite a, quite many of us. So so this uh, promoter who's supposed to be selling our, selling our, our shows or booking our shows, she, she was kind of a, you know... <laughs> Too many people. Worried that, you know, we want, how can we fit you on every stage? You know, small clubs, they have small stages. But, <laughs> We played on some pretty small stages. We can, you know, you can do it. You can fit everywhere if you just want to somehow. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. A couple of us can be uh, on the corridor or something if, if necessary, but it can be done. So each of you uh, wrote songs for the album, or was it mainly you? Or no, you it was all of us. Group? It was all of us really. Um, it was b between us brothers. Okay. Me and Nissa and Frey, uh, we, we wrote the songs on the album. And then there is, there are two covers 
yeah and then of course our, our dad wrote the one song the very last song of the on the album okay i um wrote uh read that uh, then it's gone it's the first single that will be released from the album is it already yeah, that, or not it's already out yeah it's uh, already out. really released on the 18th of uh, february okay why did you choose this song um I don't know. It seemed like a very strong song. I mean, uh, it's a bit of a starts off as a bit of a kind of slow and a ballad, mm -hmm. though it it builds up to to a more more of a, a, a massive a massive kind of thing. Uh, but um, so maybe it's an odd song to choose as a first single. I mean, you might want a more of a rocker as a first single, but uh, I think it really. Um kind of shows this Finnish part of the family you know this this mm. like like uh, you said in another interview this Finnish midsummer feeling it's really yeah coming, coming along with this song it's it's a very in a very important event the midsummer thing it's in in, yeah. in our core and obviously we have a very long winter so we've learned to <laughs> appreciate midsummer uh though here the summer is not as at its hottest but it's the, it's the lightest time of, of year and obviously when you go up to, to finish lapland uh, beyond the, the polar circle then then you you're even more affected by the light because it never yeah, it's the sun never there, goes yeah. down yeah yeah so you kind of go a bit crazy because of that too and that that's uh kind of what it's it's about it's it's to dive into that madness of uh, yeah it of, really uh, works it really works yeah, uh, i've listened yeah. to the album and it's really very nice coming along it's really nice to hear the different um inputs from every family member i really like that because it's so diverse and you did a great Thanks. job with this thank you so i was uh, thinking about it if do you plan to do more than one album or was that just like a family project you just wanted to do since a long time? Well, it's uh, the, the plan, uh, I think, is, is to keep doing it. And uh, um, so probably uh, an album will be there, but, but I, I don't exactly know when. We don't have any timelines for it. Uh, but... Um, It depends, of course, on the on the songwriting and and the everything else how it how it picks up. If if it you know the the shows the 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 record how it does in different territories. If it if it picks up really really nicely, then of course we have to try and keep up the momentum. You can't just yeah. stop there. And you <laughs> have to hurry. But, Yeah, but if it's if it's very modest, then uh, then we can sort of <laughs> well then we relax a bit more. But that sounds like a good plan to do just relaxed stuff more. Yeah, and the music yeah. comes a bit more easy. <laughs> yeah, the, then we just enjoy it, you know. Exactly. So you look back on uh, almost uh, about 40 years of music business. Is yeah. There that's any moment that you are most proud of that you really like to remember back hmm. well i guess i mean during the hanoi times that the recording of uh, two steps from the move was uh, one of the proudest moments when that came out because that was that was really a a proper production uh, hadn't been part of such a professional kind of project before that uh, the other ones were, were a bit more of yeah a bit more loose uh, but but this was very 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 professional very well planned and set up and um from it, it was uh, from pre-production to the in, in london and then going over to new york to do the backing tracks and then to toronto to do the uh the, the overdubs and the you know finishing the album and mixing oh then we, we were back in london as well mixing because then we recorded up around the band in, in london so and that was a big thing uh, yeah and uh, to, to hear the outcome of that that, that was a problem proud moment i i think 
sounds like it was really uh, like kind of a journey to get this album done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, we had Bob Ezra as a producer and he, he had he had only one way of doing it and that was to do it properly and and he realized also that there were challenges in our band you know we had personalities and uh and habits and and things that that weren't really he had to kind of take control of yeah. of it all bef before he could start with it and uh, and keep doing it during the during the process so um, yeah so he didn't have an, an easy job but he, he did very well <laughs> So is there, um, when you think back to the Hanoi Rocks times, is there a special moment that comes to your mind that you really, when you think of Hanoi Rocks, it immediately gets that point, that something that happened? Is there something uh, like this? When, when I jump off that roof, and <laughs> <laughs> that, that was probably one, because the first time I jumped off, I, I got stuck uh, high up in, uh, on, on this building. And, uh, uh, so then came came down slowly but surely on the line uh, to the stage and then I had to go and do it all over again. <laughs> it was a bit scary, but yeah, I mean, moments, yeah, they were obviously, obviously some, some moments that, that were, were quite nice. Uh, but then again, in those days, the, the band, that, that was kind of the whole whole life around it as well. I mean, we lived, we lived together, me and Brazil, for instance, and uh, the band life kind of carried on, you could say 24 hours. Yeah. It was, it was actually quite difficult to get away from it. And I think that maybe had something to do with uh, why, why uh, you know, people, we, uh, you know, using the drugs got a bit beyond just experimenting or having mm -hmm. fun. It was, <laughs> it became a bit, a bit of an escape. Yeah, but uh, it's not always yeah. easy to handle it's not... being together all the time. And no, no, no that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, that was a long time ago. We were young, and uh, <laughs> you know, basically, we were kids. So. Uh, uh, you know, there were good times and bad times, obviously. As always. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you decided then to um, quit your music life in the late 90s, I think. You, you have just been yeah. sometimes back uh, on stage yeah, with I mean, Michael I... and Hanoi Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I had some, some uh, you know, good times putting bands together uh, that didn't last. Uh, so... Um, there were always, there was always some aspect of it that I, I just couldn't you know it, it didn't gel for some reason even though there was probably a lot of uh, a lot of bands that could have developed into something but I don't know I was a bit impatient in those days or something <laughs> I did, couldn't find what I was looking for somehow and uh, but then uh, with cheap and nasty, I mean, I went to LA and we got cheap and nasty together. And obviously, there was a, my my old friend Timo Kaltio was in the band as well. And uh, so we we and got a really good bunch of guys together. And then Mike Finn was playing playing bass from the Un Unforgiven, and, and Les Riggs playing drums. And uh, then then I moved. Uh, we had to move back to to London, really. Uh, the whole band couldn't move, move with us, so Alvin joined on bass. But uh, yeah, so we did a couple of albums. We had we had some really good times, but things were just hard hard to get to pick up. There, there was, mm -hmm. I think, again something something missing, something missing that would would kind of get that special attention and uh, kind of get things rolling really. It was yeah. a good band, good songs, and it got, got a fair amount of interest, and it's, especially afterwards, after we broke up. But um, yeah, slowly but surely, I just got tired of it. And, and, okay, yeah. And I started, started kind of uh, thinking that it would be really nice to, to uh, study and... Uh, get a uh, normal get, get another, life. <laughs> Another another career, yeah. <laughs> At that point, normal for me was was to walk around uh, the the city, just you know, 
with no money and <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> and thinking thinking what's what's the next band i'm gonna play you know, should i play in a band you know that was the normal in those days so <laughs> so uh, a kind of academic career seemed like something special really yeah so did you ever regret that choice to stop there and and go to no. start again never no no i i haven't regretted no i mean i think i uh yeah it was a good break for me in the end to, to do that and uh, and it worked out great i don't know if it, if it does for everybody but uh but it worked worked good for me and there also also i had the model of my dad he did the same thing when he was <laughs> that same age so uh in that sense as well it seemed like the the normal thing to do that's very good so Nowadays you're a bit older than back then, <laughs> so it's funny, isn't bit, it? <laughs> you got a bit more wise. Is there something you would do different nowadays than than you would have done back with the knowledge of today? Um, I don't know. First, I mean, I would like to say yes. You know, I would have I would have liked to avoid certain things or to develop would have liked to develop musically maybe more and and uh things like that but then again if i hadn't gone down that path that was open for me then then i probably would have missed a lot of it and uh you you know you never it's hard to say impossible to say really so uh, but i have thought yeah that I should have, but then again, in Finland in those days, they, the opportunities weren't really that that many. I mean, if you wanted to get a, like a training in music, you would have you had to go the the traditional or the old path, you know, the yeah. tr classical classical kind of training, and yeah, that that didn't really interest me. I was never a classical player, uh, so so really, that was the only way to go. Really, start playing, go, go with the punk. Go with the punks and uh, you know, play gigs with the where the bar was pretty low. You didn't have yeah. to play that well. <laughs> Just you know, have some good energy, and that, that was enough. What well, sounds like very interesting times you have been through. <laughs> Surely not easy, but also very interesting. Yeah, well, life is never easy. I guess no, no uh, it never. But is. it's interesting, <laughs> like you said. So. Um, in February this year, you talked to uh, Kayasin, and you mentioned that you um, got uh, prostate cancer. That's right. And, yeah, yeah. Um, you just tell me if I don't should ask. I can also cut it off if you don't want to talk about it. Oh, I was just okay. um, wondering, as you have been through the um, radiation phase in, in the end of March, how are you doing nowadays? Are you doing good? Are you feeling well? Or yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, it was about a year ago that I was diagnosed, and then uh, I went through some chemotherapy. I was started on hormone therapy right away, and then went through some chemotherapy that took quite a long time. And then after New Year, we had the, the radiation. That was also quite a long, long phase. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, mean, I, I feel okay. Uh, I mean, I can obviously sense that it's not the same and never going to be the same again yeah of course yeah <laughs> so, uh, but uh, but it's all right it's all right you know uh, it's it's better than the alternative <laughs> <laughs> i mean the treatments are heavy but uh, that that's what has to be done because the 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 cancer is, has spread to the bone and, and yeah. things like that so it, it, there's no way to just operate it out yeah but now well, we're just waiting and just yeah waiting and and, watching, and you have your check, and waiting. check ups yeah yeah there's gonna be one before before the kind of summer okay. and then one after the summer and then we're gonna do also a, a scan to see if there's any any new stuff any so surprises I, I keep my fingers crossed for you yeah yeah me too me too but it yeah it's a little bit uh, feel good but it's it's always nagging somewhere yeah of course it is yeah. it's, it's good to good to keep busy and try to try to enjoy life instead exactly that's the best way to heal always yeah <laughs> well yeah i mean we all we all just have the life that we have i mean exactly uh, 
in that so sense, nothing's changed. So is this also a reason why you've done this family album or was the family album, um, the idea came up before you knew about the cancer? Well, the idea for the family album came just before, actually. It, okay. was, uh, we, it was after uh, a bit more than a year ago. Uh, than the, uh, it was a, a company uh, uh, called uh, Rolling Records who, who have re done re-releases of stuff that have been uh, a bit obscure. And so they did a re-release of my solo album Mm -hmm. that, that wasn't available anywhere and they wanted to do a vinyl of that so they did a couple of badges bad batches of that and uh, so i was there to collect some of my own copies of the, <laughs> the vinyls okay. and uh, i happened to mention that yeah at the moment we have uh, we have a family band and we're, we're planning to do a, a recording maybe an ep or something just to kind of uh document that, that the band happened and what kind yeah. of band was it and, uh, so and it's that, so that it's available and they said that, well if you're doing a recording we're, we're certainly interested in uh, putting it out and so they would they would like to be our record label uh, but they said that you, you might want to do an album not just an ep yeah. you know, <laughs> write, write some more stuff and well, you know, we decided well we have some more stuff and and thought some more about it and and suddenly we have had 10 songs that we we recorded and and that's the album and that that kind of shows really it's a good kind of uh, cut through what the band is all about and and where it comes from and uh and maybe a little bit where, where it's going <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so it shows you exactly what it is and and Obviously, the next album would be would be different. That would be more. You, you had to evolve in some direction, but uh, basically, it's going to be kind of have the rootsy rock and roll about mm -hmm. it always. That's for sure. But your question wasn't about that. Your question was <laughs> about when you know what came first. So the album decision came first, came first. and then okay. and then pretty soon after that, I had my diagnosis, and then. And I was thinking, shit, what, we, what do we do now? And does this, so, but it, but it was apparent that, you know, uh, I, I feel good. I, I feel like playing and uh, yeah. why, why don't we just carry on? And so we just carried on like, like normal or like we planned to. And at the same time, I went into my, my chemo phase, uh, having my chemotherapy while we were doing the recording. And so I actually wrote a song about that called Chemo Brain. Mm -hmm. That's on, on the record. And uh, and I don't know if anyone notices the pictures that we took for the for the album cover as well. That I don't have any eyebrows. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I look a bit bit of a walking walking corpse, but uh, uh, yeah. No, I'm, I don't I'm think so. Much, much better now. <laughs> Yeah, but it's good that you had something that kept you going, right? I guess it yeah. helped yeah, you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I mean, it, it was something positive to think about. Exactly. Definitely. That's always good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was wondering, you, you've been one of these big rock bands from Finland. You, you've played in one of them. Um, what do you think about the rock bands nowadays? Do you think they still have the that little thing um, that could get them as big as you have been? Or do you think that's impossible uh, nowadays? I, I don't know what, what makes bands big, uh, to be honest, but um, what makes them big in my eyes or what, what, what kind of excites me when I see bands, uh, obviously it's it's that kind of bit of a playfulness in, in, the, in you know, bands that, that that are creative in their songwriting, but you know, ni bit nice and and loose as well and relaxed, uh, but at the same energetic and the kind of an energy that comes from kind of comes from below and from behind. It's it's, a, <laughs> it's difficult to explain that it, it's it, it, nothing too clinical um, and nothing that's too you know too cleanly produced or, yeah. or anything like that you like to kind of be able to sense the the, the energy and the sweat and the, there, yeah yeah so is so, there a, a young finnish band you would uh, say has this spirit 
that you would recommend or uh i hope so i mean there's a young band that's <laughs> going to be supporting us in the and we have a show on the 11th of uh, june a young band's called the halo phones and uh yeah that's the first kind of proper show i see of them i know the guys a little bit from before so i okay. hope i hope they're going to be i'm sure they're going to do good i will definitely check them out <laughs> so um how do you think about becoming now at your age uh, a full-time musician again well i'm not full-time musician i mean i have still have my job in the pharmaceutical mm -hmm. pharma but, industry but would you if if the if the success was ah. there would you do that or would you say like no 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 <laughs> i keep my job <laughs> uh i don't know it's difficult to say i mean at the moment since I, we have small kids and everything so it's not it doesn't seem like the most attractive option to go around on big tours and things yeah. so it has it would have to be planned with with uh you know with in big in smaller pieces yeah but then again i mean uh bands maybe don't do that vast tours not not everybody anyway nowadays yeah it's hard to get like this long time yeah. tours nowadays that's true yeah that's right so i mean i yeah if the success was there i mean let's first see if, if that's possible <laughs> and, or, or what 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 kind of what level of success we we get to but until then i keep my day job i think <laughs> you keep it okay <laughs> yeah so um we've come to the end of the interview it's okay it has been really nice to talk to you um likewise I really wish you a lot of success with your family album because I Thank really you. think you've done a great job. I will also write a review about it. So excellent. Good, good. So I've already listened to it. Really, really nice work. Excellent, excellent. So excellent. thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And, uh, keep healthy and, and uh, hope everything stays great for you and your family. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Take care. <laughs> bye bye. Bye-bye. Bye, nice to see you.